day we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph the Worker, and uh, God came and said, What well, wish we have you feast day? And I said, You know, it really is. I'm not St. Joseph the husband of Mary, I'm St. Joseph the Worker. <laughs> I really relate to him. Uh, he just makes me, uh, inspires me. And I say that because, uh, because he truly was a great worker in so many, 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 many ways. Not only in his own uh, avocation or vocation, but even as a as a great child of God. He was a great worker doing God's work. <clears throat> One of my favorite pictures, in fact, I had it painted in my last church, because we had an L-shaped church, so on the transept above, we had a large painting of Saint, uh, the Holy Family, but this one was of St. Joseph in the carpenter shop leaning over the child Jesus as he's making it. It looks like somewhat like a birdhouse, I think, almost. And Joseph, and you can tell him, is just speaking to him gently about how to build this. And Jesus is, is, is working really intently on the project. And in the background facing you is the Blessed Mother looking with this very whimsical smile on her face. It's a beautiful, so tender, and yet it captures, in my mind, the whole uh, heart and soul of this great, great saint called the Beer for Davies, the faithful man, the quiet man, literally. John Wayne didn't, he, John Wayne stole the title from uh, St. Joseph. He didn't say much. He was just one of these great, great, great saints that I think is just taken for granted in our church. Uh, when we get renovation, we're going to put Joseph over there, and we're going to be over here. We'll both line up both sides. I have a great devotion to it. You know, one of the great traditions was that Joseph actually was a widow. Some of the ancient church fathers surmised, in fact, one of the great traditions that he was an older man, a widower, had children from a previous marriage. And that's where you get these things. Is it, uh, uh, when Joseph and James and Simon Judas are, aren't they his brothers? Well, yeah, they'd be his, his uh, stepbrothers because uh, he was, uh, Joseph became the foster father of Jesus and then his family became part of that family, much like many mixed families are in the same situation. So he was, uh, traditionally was, uh, uh, at least one of the great traditions, he was a widower that in his elderly age took on this task Mary. In fact, someone asked me the other day, why does Joseph's staff have uh, flowers at the top? And I said, another great ancient tradition from one of the apocryphal gospels that uh, there were so many suitors for Mary, seeking her hand in marriage, and they were going to lay their staff on the side of the house of Mary's home. And God told me to give a sign it was Joseph's that blossomed with lilies at the uh, top of it. And it was that Mary knew that was the sign that God gave her to choose this one to be her husband to be the foster father of the child that she was going to bear, the son of God, and to be the head of the whole family. <clears throat> Beautiful traditions, and uh, we'll never know until I get to heaven to find out the whole story, but I love the traditions. And the fact is, how wise God was to choose this person who had probably so much wisdom. He was a great worker. He was a carpenter. Carpenters, they were general contractors. They were uh, kind of a jack of all trades. They just didn't work in wood. They worked in all kinds of uh, materials. They would build houses, uh, stone and stone walls. They would make furniture for houses. They would do farm tools. And one of the great traditions is that above the carpenter shop was the sign of the yoke is easy. A great sign that came in the gospel. That they were the greatest, the best yoke makers, particularly the training yokes for teaching a young ox how to pull the weight without having to carry the load. The load would be fitted on the shoulders of the big ox, and the little guy would walk alongside. Jesus used that image to talk about how we walk with him. He carries the load, we just need to walk with him. Beautiful image, but it came from one of the great apocryphal gospels. But I love Joseph because <clears throat> he was a very wise man. In fact, I find his mind very disparaging. I mean, is he not the carpenter's son? Like, who? Who's that? I'll tell you, I have a dear, dear friend. He worked in the business of uh, doing all the interior woodwork for big stores and hotels, like Ann Taylor, the Gap, and all that. Really, actually, hotels all over the world, but uh, he did most of the interior work, all the woodwork, and marble work, and stuff. But he's one of the smartest guys I've ever known, and he never went to school formally. He didn't go to a 
carpenter school. Uh, he was going to be an architect, so he took some drafting classes. In fact, he's the one that's helping us here with the church because he's in between jobs right now. And, and uh, he just comes because he gets a kick out of it. And he'll, he'll sit and look at something and come up with 10 different things that a guy who's got his degree in structural engineering can't even get a vision. This guy just has a mind that just doesn't stop. He's, he's incredible. And he learned it by the seat of his pants and by the working side by side with his father and other master things. He just developed a keen eye for things and a keen way of solving problems. And carpenters in that day were those kind of people. They had a keen eye. And they had a creative mind. And they could see things and solve problems. And how much this great worker, he first was a great worker, he must have been strong as the, the ox, you know, I don't know if you watch people that deal with their hands like carpenters or pipe fitters. I shook the hand with a pipe and I thought it was grabbing a hold of a rock. His hands were so rough and it just, it was just one giant callus. I mean, he could have crushed my hand. And uh, that's what Joseph was. I, I could just see this image of a big, strong shoulder guy, big beard. He's got shavings in his beard. And, uh, not shaving this way. Wood shavings in his beard as he works along. And, uh, but he must have been a very bright man, and he passed that on to our Lord. Our Lord uh, had a keen eye for things in life, identifying things, you know, certain character people, but being able to pick up things in life, it became just part and parcel of his whole preaching. And it all, a lot of it came from his own work, working in the carpenter shop with his foster father, Joseph. He taught Jesus. First, how to work hard and work well, because he was a great, hard-working man and he did his work well. And we, that's one thing we got to learn from him. You know, people have lost the ability how to work hard and work well in our society. I get complaints all the time from people who run businesses. They say, it's unbelievable to me. They're supposed to work from like 8 to 4 and uh, the little half an hour break for lunch. And about 3 o'clock, they start cleaning up their desk. Still a full hour of work. We start cleaning up the desk and the thing that pedal around and then they go get a glass of water and then we get a cup of coffee and before long, one whole hour or two hours have just gone out of work. We don't know how to work. Go to my uncle's ranch. They'll teach you how to work. They work from the moment it gets, actually before it even gets light, they do all the things in the bar and get everything ready and then they work all the night, day long till they can't get any more sunlight. Now in the modern day, you got lights and they'll put you out there and I've seen them out there in the tractors 10 o'clock at night because they've got these big uh, spotlights that can be able to do it. But they work hard. We need to learn again how to work hard in this nation. And why? Because we are part of God's creative ability. We are, we are taking the things and participating in God's creative nature. We should see ourselves as participants and co-workers with God to bring alive this world. Bring along good things and help people. You know? So we we got to learn that again from Joseph. Pray for it for our nation, not to want to sell back into just uh, having a hand out or doing something just that's just easy all the time. But learn how to work hard, work well, and to see ourselves as part of this great plan of salvation. What a remarkable man this Joseph must have been. Remarkable. To take on knowing quite the future, but a revelation of God that he was to take Mary as his wife. And she was with child and didn't understand the whole dynamic of it. And yet he trusted God's word and took care of him and protected him, even giving up his, his home and his work for a while to take him to safety into Egypt, then coming back and starting all over again. What a remarkable man. And that's why he's an inspiration for me as a person, as a why is he an inspiration for the church and why he's been declared as one of the patrons of the universal church because we are all participants in this great work of God and we should learn how to work hard and work well because we only get a limited time to do something for God and as I read in Steve Jobs uh, comments, you know we should want to not settle for little things we should dream big, do big things you know, we only get a limited time then we're out of this world. And once you come into peace with death, as Joseph did, he's the patron saint of a happy death, he died between the same tradition, Mary and Jesus. 
We're going to die with all the saints around us. Maybe we'll be lucky to have some of our own family around us. But boy, oh boy, we wouldn't you going to make a peace with death? We should just tear the world apart. Who cares if you fail? I was so lucky to be with a pastor. He said, I don't care if you fail. I care if you don't try. If you fail, guess what? You learn one more thing. Huh? Dead didn't work. Okay, we got more smart. One more thing. But it's those who don't even try for fear of failure that, we, that our world sometimes goes backwards and our faith goes back. We have everything to risk for the kingdom of God. And let's do it. Let's be inspired by Joseph and Mark, <clears throat> who took on this unbelievable task, not just taking uh, a woman who was pregnant with a child, not his own, to take it on and then realize that the Son of God knew everything to protect him and then do everything to train him so that he could be ready to be the savior of the world. It was all part of that time. And it's interesting enough, when he ended up against something he had all his lot of life, he ended up against the wood that he knew so well when he hung on the cross and the carpenter dying there for our salvation. And Joseph was instrumental in that. So we pray, Joseph, make us great workers. Make us great workers in this world as we participate in building up this creation great workers for the enterprise of salvation for souls, protect us from all harm, intercede for us, Joseph, and help us too one day to arrive home in the kingdom of you, your beloved wife, blessed Virgin Mary, and your beautiful stepson, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.